Hey, this is Mr. Warden. This is your Geometry Exit Ticket 29.2 video key, and here we go. So, similar problems to what you had on the do now. We've got x squared plus 6 squared equals 100. And so for B, what you want to do first is isolate the x squared so that you can get square root of both sides. So for B, we're going to subtract 6 squared from both sides. So x squared will equal 100 minus 6 squared, which is 36. And that will equal, so I'll go ahead and write it in so you can see all the steps. And so that's going to equal 100 minus 36, which will equal 64. So x squared equals 64. Now we get the square root of both sides, x squared. And the square root of 64. Okay, and so we'll get x on the left, because the square root of x squared is x, and then we'll get plus or minus 8 on the other side. Let's take a look at d. <coughs> d, I remember if we get the square of a square root, <coughs> we cancel the square root out. We do still have to deal with the square of the 3. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to simplify this. I could also move it over there, but it's a little easier to move it over there once it's been simplified. Uh, so just for typing purposes. So that's going to be 3 squared times, well, the square of square root of 3 is just 3. So I've got 3 squared times 3, and that's going to equal, uh, equal 36 over here. Now I'll simplify it one more step. x squared plus 3 squared is 9, so 9 times 3 equals 36. So x squared plus 27 equals 36. Now I'll subtract it from both sides. x squared will equal 36 minus 27, which will equal 9. And x squared now equals 9. We'll get the square root of both sides. I'll scroll down a little bit. Okay, square root of x squared will equal the square root of 9, and so x will equal plus or minus 3, because that's the square root of 9. Okay, now let's look at the last one here. x squared equals this business. Once again, we're squaring a square root, but we're also squaring a number that's not in a square root, so we got to deal with that and that. Here we'll be just squaring the square root. So let's simplify that so then we can get the square root of both sides. So x squared will equal the square of 5, 5 squared, and then that's also times 3 because the square of the square root of 3 is 3. And then we'll have over here the square of the square root of 5, which is just 5. <clears throat> and we can simplify that. x squared will now equal... Uh, 25 times 3 plus 5. And now x squared will equal 75 plus 5, which is 80. And now you're like, Mr. Ward, that's not a neat and tidy square. And you're right, it's not, but that's okay. We can do this. x squared equals 80, and we want to get the square root of both sides square root of x squared, and then the square root of 80. So that's going to be x equals the square root of 80, but the square root of 80 can be broken up into the square root of 16 times 5. Neat. <clears throat> so we'll get the square root of 16 times 5, which will equal the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. So x will equal plus or minus 4 times the square root of 5. If it were written on a page with, you know, Decent uh, stuff would be that we'd be saying x equals plus, make actual real plus, or minus 4 
root 5. And that's how you would write the answer. And then you'd be done with that. Now let's take a look at the quadratics down here. So once again, we've got a bunch of quadratics. So we're going to have two answers for each one. Um, so let's deal with the first one. So we got B. And what you need to do, well, you look, look through all of these and you want to make sure the quadratic is isolated on one side and zeros on the other because it's hard to solve otherwise. And they all are. <clears throat> okay, so for this first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find two factors of negative 12 that add up to 4. So let's make that nice little X. I'll use blue this time. Okay, so I need two factors of negative 12 that add up to 4. And the two factors of negative 12 will be positive and negative. And I'm looking at something, okay, what are two factors of 12 that are 4 apart? Well, 2 and 6 are 4 apart. It's going to be positive, so the positive one needs to be further from zero. So that's going to be plus six and negative two. And then I can just say x minus two and x plus six. So those are my factors. So go back in here and let's say this. So this is going to be factor first. And we end up with x minus two times x plus 6 equals 0. Once we do that, find the zeros, the x-intercepts of each factor. Okay, so x could be 2 and x could be negative 6. So those are the, the those are solutions. 2 minus 2 would make this 0, so it would be 0 times whatever. Negative 6 would make this one 0. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0, so that would be 0 times whatever. And zero times whatever is zero. So now let's take a look at C. I'm sorry, D. Okay, D. D needs to be rearranged. Okay, and it'll be easy to work with once we do. Oh, that was weird. The way that dragged down like that. I'll have to clean that up. But now we've got, what I want is the negative 18 to be at the end. So I'm going to say x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals zero. And now I'm going to factor. Okay. Um, let's clean some things up over here. I do not know why that happened. That was so weird. How did that get anchored there? That's okay. So I need to find two factors of negative 18. that add up to negative three. What are two factors of negative 18 that add up to negative three? Well, there's gonna be a negative factor and a positive factor. And 18 is three times six. So negative 18 could be three times negative six. Okay, and then we can set up our little things, x minus six and x plus three. Okay, and then I'll turn that off. And once we've factored it, we've got um, x minus 6 times x plus 3. And to confirm this, so negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Negative 6 times x, that's negative 6. And then we get a positive 3x. Those would add up to negative 3x. And x times x is x squared. So we set that equal to 0. And so x could be 6, and x could be negative 3, because those are what are called the zeros. They're the x-intercepts of the factors. If you get an x-intercept of either factor, it will turn that factor into 0, because an x-intercept is where the output is 0. The y value is 0. So the output of x minus 6 is 0 when x is 6. The output of x plus 3 is 0 when x is negative 3. So if you get the output of either one of these factors to be zero, you turn the entire overall product output uh, output to be zero as well. Okay, I need to scroll up a little bit so we can see the last one. <clears throat> so the last one here 
<clears throat> is going to be a little extra trick we want to do here because there's a negative in front of this x squared. So a thing we can do is we can actually factor out the negative from everything. So factor a negative 1 from each side. So when I divide ne everything on this side by negative 1, this will become x squared. This will become negative 5x. And this will become negative 36. If I factor a negative 1 out of 0, what I'm doing is I'm dividing 0 by negative 1. And who cares about what that is? It's just 0. 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. Because there are zero, it takes 0 negative 1s to make a 0. All right. Now we can factor this. So let me erase some things over here. All that stuff out of the way. Um, I have a negative 36 that I'm working with. Should I clean all this up here so it's not so busy? Clean this up. So I have a negative 36. I want a product of negative 36. I need two factors of negative 36 that add up to negative 5. So negative 5 is my target sum. Okay, once again, we're going to have a negative and a positive factor of 36, of negative 36, I should say. So let's think about what are factors of 36 that might work. That basically, I find it personally easier to think about just positive 36 and find two factors that are five apart. That's how I start. So you may be able to do it some other way, but I, that's just, to, for my brain, the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to think about, okay... 4 times uh, 4 times 9, well, 4 times 9, 4 and 9 are, in fact, 5 apart. I could also look at 3 and 12. That doesn't work. They're too far apart. Um, 2 and 18 don't work, and 1 and 36 don't work. But 4 times 9 does work. Okay, so we want the negative to, we want the negative to be further from 0. So we're going to use negative 9 here that more of a 9, and a positive 4 over here. Okay, and we'll make an x here. And an, uh, make a little bi binomial or linear binomial factor over here, x minus 9 and x plus 4. So we have now factored this. So this is going to be x minus 9 times x plus 4 equals 0. And we just need to find out what x could be. x could be 9, because that's an x-intercept of x minus 9. And x could be negative 4, because negative 4 is the x-intercept of x plus 4. Negative 4 plus 4 equals 0. 9 minus 9 equals 0. You turn either one of these into 0. Then you turn the whole thing into 0. So those are the solutions. And actually, we have names for the solutions. You may remember from the way back machine. Uh, we call these the x-intercepts of the quadratic. We also call them the zeros. We call them the solutions because in this case we're using uh, the intercepts to find the solutions to what x is. And then finally they are called roots because another way to think of these quadratics is uh, they are square functions. And if you can work out the square root of something you can often get the solution as well. All right, I hope that has been helpful.